Hey guys, back again with another teardown. I was in a Kihabara the other day, again, like I usually am, and I uh, found one of these in a uh, big pile. 800 yen each, so I thought I'll grab a few. So, it's a, just a power board, yeah, but it's got a few interesting features, like plug your computer in here, and then when your computer turns on, these three will turn on. And then when you turn your computer off, then they turn off correspondingly. So, that way you turn your computer on, and then your screen, your printer, your whatever, all turn on. These N3 uh, always are on, so they're good for like your desk lamp, your phone charger, stuff like that. Uh, this here says always on, this one here says basically translates to it corresponds to this, and this says PC only, because apparently you can only plug a computer in, you're not meant to turn anything else on and off uh, to control this, so it's only designed for a PC up to about 500 watts. That might be a limitation of the control circuitry, um, yeah, the current carrying capacity and the detection methods, because this will turn on above a certain current and um, turn off below a certain current. Uh, so they only guarantee that it will work with a PC. So it's a, a Sanwa Synchro Tap is what it's called, Japanese style. There's some uh, interesting Japanese style engineering, things like the uh, the optional earth. As a, an Australian electrician with very, very strict uh, electrical regulations, this is kind of, um, makes me uh, cry, really. It's, it's one of those things where you never see them connected. People just can't be bothered. They plug it in, it works. Eh, whatever. Um, I might change this to a, uh, a three-pin plug. They do use three-pin plugs in Japan, not very often, but in my house, which I'm building, I've specified every point is to be earthed. In Japan, with the uh, earthing requirements, it's only recommended that all points be earthed. The only ones they routinely have an earth at is at the kitchen, the bathroom, and the laundry, uh, wet areas. Everywhere else, they don't tend to put an earth, but uh, I wanted earth everywhere, so I'm going to do that. Um, so yeah, optional earths. It's a common thing in Japan. Then in, on the other end, we got these funny looking plugs. They, they are just a two pin with the earth, uh, three pin, but they take the standard two pin and you plug it in and you give it a twist and it locks, which is pretty cool because that means you can't accidentally kick things unplugged under your desk. Give it a twist and it comes back out again. So that's a pretty good idea. In keeping with the spirit of optional earths, we've got an earth screw on the side. That's connected directly to the earth rail and connected directly through to this one. I like this idea not for the fact that um, it's you know, for the optional earth idea, but it makes a very convenient point to plug in your, uh, your wrist straps straight to there. All your anti-static mats and stuff. You can just wire them straight to a uh, screw like that, rather than having to make a plug and plug it in. It's just a nice convenient earth point. Nice for that. And then we got magnets on the back, which is another nice feature for connecting, you know, for mounting it to a, a metal workbench or you know, something magnetic so it stays in place. There's no uh, holes in the back for the screws, you know, the keyhole style holes you have where you put the screw into your, your bench or whatever and then it kind of hooks on and slides. It would be nice to have that sort of thing for non-metallic uh, mounting methods, but hey, uh, I'm, I'm nitpicking now. So, as I said before, basically the way this works is you plug your computer or your load into here, and every time that load turns on, these three will turn on, and then these will turn off correspondingly with that. At the end, we've got a, a switch on standby and auto, which I guess works like a auto-off manual switch and an LED which shows the status of what these should be doing. So if that LED is on, these, should, these three should be on. Alright, well let's take it apart and see how the thing actually works. Now I discovered when I went to take this apart that this thing, I'll see if I can get it to focus, it has these line head screws. This one might be the easiest one to see. You might be able to see it there. They're a funny tamper-proof screw. They're similar to the ones used in many uh, game consoles like uh, Nintendo and Sega. But these are a, a larger size. So I went to Akihabara again and I bought these. If ever you need to get into an old 
uh, Nintendo or Sega console or something like this, you'll find, I'll show you a picture on here. These are the two most common sizes of screw. The DTC20 and DTC27, otherwise known as the line head screw. And these are the shapes. So the DTC20 is what's used on your consoles and you know, small electronics. And this one is used for the uh, larger electronics, like mains size stuff, the bigger screws. These particular ones are made by a brand called Engineer and they're called a personal computer driver DTC 20 and 27. There's also a size 40 I believe which is discontinued I guess no one ever used it and there's a larger one again but I haven't seen that one around very much at all I think it's very specialized. These two sizes are the um, the most common you'll you'll come across, and the DTC20 is probably the most common you'd see outside Japan on Japanese electronics that gets exported. They cost about sixteen or seventeen dollars each, as uh, specialised tamper-proof screw drivers generally cost, uh, expensive, um, but they do make life a lot easier to take things apart. Although I have found that the DTC27, you can actually use a different uh, screwdriver. I got this set here, and I believe it was the black one, which I tried first. It's a just a standard hex, and it's the four millimeter size. So a four millimeter focus, focus. The four millimeter. Uh, if I can hold it so you can see, just a standard hex. We'll just grab these screws enough to turn them. So you can see there, and that will fit on there. You've got to push down quite hard to get it turned, but in a pinch, a 4mm will undo a DTC 27 or a 27 size line head screw. I'm not sure about the small one because I haven't tried it yet, but I guess there would be a hex size that would just kind of grab it because he's actually six sided so six sided and six sided you can kind of just mash them together but if you can get the proper thing they fit so much is it that one yep they fit so much focus yeah you can see there it's just clicks in so magic when you got the right things enough about that let's see if we can take this thing apart And uh, when I um, put this thing back together, I will be replacing the screws with Phillips screws because I don't like tamper-proof, because I like tampering. So I went and got myself some 3.5 millimeter uh, self-tapping, or you know, the same kind of thread as these. 3.5 millimeter Phillips screws. So I'll put those Phillips ones back in here when I put this back together, because I'm an electrician, I know what I'm doing. I don't need to keep my own fingers out. Alrighty, let's peel the top off. And that's what we're playing with. So, obviously the cable comes in here. It looks like there's a cap here for another type of cable entry. It's got the same uh, teeth on this side as it does this side. So there must be a different entry that they can put in here or I don't know. I haven't seen that used at all, but uh, it must give them options. In Japan, it's funny, the black is actually the active, the supply side, and the white is a neutral. The active comes in, and it bounces along the first three, and then there's a break, just here. And then this one here, that's our supply, that supplies our circuit, which we'll get to just in a sec. And then a neutral of course comes to here and then that comes all the way along the same and then the earth is all the same all the way along now when we plug into this one we have a sense wire that loops in and out and then we've got a relay which comes back to the three that are switched on and off so let's pull this out and have a look So 
So basically what happens is the active comes from here, comes all the way into our circuit, the red wire, comes back out to here, and then when you plug your appliance in, your computer or whatever, it comes, it's pulling power from here, which pulls the power through this circuit, which detects that current draw, and then turns on these three by supplying power through this black one. Then we've got our ground reference for the, uh, the circuit, and the, uh, the appliance that is pulling power through this one just dumps it back out through the neutral, same as everything else. So, what do we got? Here's our circuit. Current transformer. Basic stuff. So it looks like that's just a standard current transformer. And that will be feeding into, I would say, a micro. There we go. There's our micro controller. And that then detects a certain level of current. There'll probably be an A to, a to D converter or some sort. And that will then figure out, oh yeah, we're pulling enough current, and then turn on our relay. That relay then supplies power to these three. One, two, three. And then there's some just some power supply jelly bean parts just over here, capacitors and resistors and whatnot. A little surge protector here to stop any uh, dirty mains coming in and popping our, our micro. So let's see what sort of micro we got. What is that? Alright, so I've had a look at these chips here. There's a bit of lacquer on them and whatnot, so it's a bit hard to read, but I managed to get all the numbers. So this one here is actually a Toshiba part, which being a Japanese appliance, makes sense. Um, it's a TMP47C101. Just a 4-bit micro. Cheap part. You don't need much horsepower to turn a relay on and off. Then down here we've got uh, an 24LC02, just a little EE prom which will be working with this, you know, storing the, any data it needs, the program and whatnot. Then at the top here, we've got a uh, LM358, just a standard op amp, jelly bean part there. So basically all we got, nice current transformer here, that feeds through into the micro. When the micro sees a certain uh, voltage level, it'll be like an analog input or something. Then uh, that will then switch on the relay, which is this box just here and that will provide power out to our three ports. Pretty, pretty easy. A few more inputs for the uh, switch. You've got a three position switch. So that's uh, like two more inputs and then the LEDs probably just run directly from the, uh, the relay here. So yeah, that's all it is. Pretty simple. And for eight bucks, can't really go wrong. We'll see you next time.